guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be breaking recent internet trend and talking about 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Let's just get right in, because I have a lot, a lot of thoughts and feelings. Um, I read this book when it came out, I was 12, and I loved it. So when I heard about the upcoming Netflix series, I was ecstatic. And I decided to reread the book because it had been a while, it had been like 10 years. I am immensely regretting that decision because after my second reread, or after my second read, I didn't like it. I had problems there. Let's just, let's just start. For me, for me probably the biggest problem was that I felt like it romanticized suicide. I remember being 12 and thinking it was such a romantic story, but I mean, Hannah herself on Clay's tape even references Romeo and Juliet, and they really did feel like star-crossed lovers to me. I, I just, I thought it was such a romantic story, and I'm kind of realizing now how completely effed up that is. The book, for me, kind of read like a romance story between Clay Jensen and a dead girl who killed herself. And it was just very uncomfortable and strange and sort of inappropriate to me. Like, I just, it, I didn't, I didn't like it very much. It was very, I don't know, I, it, it was a problem. I just, I don't know, obviously I can't say if Jay Asher intended to romanticize suicide. I've seen his articles recently, I've seen interviews with him about the the Netflix series, and I don't feel like this was an intended thing, but regardless, I, I found fault with it. There's There's nothing romantic about suicide. There's nothing romantic about someone being so ill. It's it's quite frankly a sickness and I mean I've I've been there, so I'm not judging anybody, but I just maybe because I've been there, I found it very inappropriate, very unsettling, very concerning. It's it's not romantic. It's it's a sickness, and there is treatment, which brings me to my next issue with the story. I felt like the book really excused the action of suicide. What I mean is, I felt like Hannah having all these reasons, and Clay putting so much stock into her reasons for taking her life, really left the reader with the impression that other people broke or damaged Hannah, and that had these instances not occurred, Hannah would have been fine and still alive. And I mean, while these reasons didn't help, they're really not the cause of what happens. Like I said, suicide and depression is a sickness and these reasons definitely didn't help, but they were not the underlying cause. There was already a problem and they just helped it along, but I felt like the book was too too focused on blame and whose fault this was, rather than the fact that she was sick and there was no shame in that. It put too much effort on blaming other people and later on blaming Hannah instead of putting to uh, instead of putting any focus really on the fact that she just needed help. I, f I, I just worried while reading it that someone contemplating suicide and reading this book would get the impression that they wouldn't have to feel bad about taking their life because they could blame other people and therefore no one would be angry at them for taking their life. And I just worry that that might just be a little too convenient. I, I don't know. It just, I cannot stress enough if you are considering taking your own life, get help. You, you go, and I, trust me, I know, 
it is not comfortable or easy to sit down and tell someone, I am ta I'm thinking about taking my own life. I'm considering suicide. It's not an easy thing to say. It's not a comfortable thing to say. Trust me, I know. But it's, it's also the only thing you can say to actually get the help you need. Which actually brings me to my next point. In the book, the only instance into which Hannah tries to get help, she sort of codes her needs. What I mean is she doesn't say flat out, this is the problem, I'm considering suicide, and I need help. She codes it. She, she says things like, I'm feeling really down, I, I wish everything would stop, etc, etc. The book puts her life in the hands of someone else, which is not where your life goes in that moment. In that moment, your life is completely in your hands, and the book really puts it on Mr. Porter. I remember being 12 and absolutely despising Mr. Porter, because I, I was just so angry at him. I was like, she, she came to you. How could you, how could you not help her? How could you not know that she needed help? How could you let her walk out of that office? How could you do this? How could you do that? This time around, however, it occurred to me that A, He's an English teacher. He's not he's not a therapist. He's not a licensed therapist. He isn't trained to know the signs. He's not really trained to help. He's an English teacher. He's not trained for this. I actually felt really bad for him this time reading it because I mean he's already probably blaming himself and now he has these tapes to look forward to. Great. And B she wasn't clear, and again, this isn't blaming Hannah, obviously, but he's not a trained therapist, and her, her needs were not made clear to him, and I just feel so bad for him, because, I mean, how, you really can't expect him to have had all of the answers, and just been like, oh, okay, well, obviously you mean this, let me help you with this. You need to be clear, and I feel like making this the deciding factor for Hannah, the hinging moment for Hannah, sends a really bad message. This is the one instance where she went to get help, and I don't think someone considering suicide and reading this scene is going to go, oh, well, obviously he's not a mental health professional, so of course he couldn't help. I feel like this scene is going to leave the message, no one can help you. And that terrifies me for anyone reading this book who is considering taking their own life. I, I just found such fault with that moment. Because it's the one adult, the one person who is supposed to be able to help her, and he fails. And I don't think the fact that he's just an English teacher is going to register for someone in a dark period. Also, random side note, I remember really liking her peer communications teacher in when I read it the first time when I was 12. I remember really liking that teacher. I forget her name. I think Mrs. Bradley. But this time around when I was reading it, it kind of hit me. She had a handwritten note from Hannah saying the actual word suicide. Suicide, this is something I'm considering. She's her teacher. How did she not recognize the handwriting? I mean, I mean, come on. How many written assignments have you gotten from this kid? And you're just like, oh, suicide, something I've been considering. All right, let's talk about it. And then never follow up. Lady, come on. How did you not bring this to the, like, the principal and be like, we got a situation, dude. We, we, we gotta take care of this shit. She just completely glosses over it. She has one discussion about it, and then it's just like, alright, you're probably fine now, let's move on to the next thing. Really? Really, Mrs. Bradley? I also... Those are like my biggest issues with the story as far as the message. As far as writing goes, though, Am I the only one who's kind of annoyed by Clay's tape? Like, I just felt like it was so convenient that he was the only one 
who didn't actually do something to Hannah. The only one where Hannah was like, you don't belong on this list. I just needed you in here to tell my story correctly. But you're actually innocent. You you don't have to blame yourself. I mean, that really irritated me this time around. I was really relieved when I was 12 and reading it, but this time around I was just kind of like, what? Seriously? Like, it just, it was so convenient and really kind of lame. Like, if he did it, I just, I, why couldn't you tell, why couldn't you tell his story and then rather than torture him with these tapes, just send him a note and be like, hey, I'm sorry, but you don't deserve me, blah, blah, blah or I don't deserve you. Ooh. <laughs> I don't deserve you. Bye. Like, I don't, I just, it just... I don't know. I mean, I I wouldn't want Clay to be, like, an asshole, but it just felt so convenient. He trudges through 11 tapes and then, oh, just kidding. You're not actually a bad guy. I like you. I just, you deserve better. So, bye. Really? Like, I don't know, just really convenient and irritating to me. It kind of felt like one of those things where like you read an entire story and then it's like and then they woke up and it was all fake and it's just like what? 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 Really? I don't know. Am I? Do you agree? Was anybody else annoyed by that? Let me know, know in the comments because I might just be weird. I'm open to that possibility. I also wasn't a big fan of the writing. Like, I felt like the writing just focused on, like, such insignificant details. Like, it was just really choppy. Like, okay, so for example, he he would say, like, I went into the store, then I went to the back to where they keep the sodas. Then I opened the door and grabbed an orange soda. Then I went up to the counter. Then I picked out a candy bar, then I paid for it, then I went outside, then I sat down, then I opened the soda and took a sip, then I opened the candy bar and realized I didn't want it, then I threw it out, and it's just like... Ugh. The writing gave me whiplash. <laughs> like, I just... I didn't like the writing at all. Like, why couldn't you just shorten it to, I went into the store, got a soda and a candy bar, and then I went outside, sat down, realized I didn't want the candy bar, and that was it. That's all that happened. I just... it. I don't know. I, I really didn't like the writing. Um, like I said, compared to everything else, that is a very minor issue that I had. But... Yeah. And finally, the characters. Sort of all blended together for me. Like, I don't know about you guys, but... The characters just all seemed exactly the same, probably because we were getting them from Hannah's point of view in the one instance where they really screwed her over, so they all were assholes as far as we were concerned, and they just all were the same exact person in my mind. I really couldn't differentiate between any of them. Um, Clay kind of, like I could kind of separate Clay from the rest, but only because he was telling the story, or helping tell the story. For the most part though, everyone just seemed like the same person. And Clay's mom, Jesus, Clay's mom. When I was 12, I thought she was so cool because she was just so easygoing and like, okay, yeah, have fun. But this time I was just kind of like, dude, you're like such a bad parent. She knows he's lying. He's like out and he's like, oh, I'm with friends. And then she finds out he's not. And she's just like, okay, well, stay safe. What? My mom would have dragged my ass home and been like, you are never leaving this house again. You're grounded for the rest of your life. She's just like, okay. Have fun out in the big wide world, even though I have no idea what you're doing or where you're going. What parent does that? No, no. I'm sorry, but I was just like, seriously? I, 
I have never had a more less I don't know. Why are parents in YA is always always so unconvincing? Every parent is just not present and just so lenient and it drives me crazy. Fear not, I do have two nice things to say. Uh they're kind of minor, but they are there. I thought Clay was funny, and I got a lot of creative ideas from this book. For example, the scribble books from when he's sitting in Monet's. I think that would be such a fun thing to do at like my house if someone comes and visits, having them scribble something into the book, and then like I can look over it at the end of the year. Uh, the collection of things found around campus, Ryan's collection. I think that would be really fun to do. Just walk around finding things and keeping them and putting them in a little journal or something. Also sounds fun. Those have nothing to do with this story, but I thought Clay was funny and I got a lot of nice creative ideas from it. Yeah. I didn't like this book. This book really rubbed me the wrong way. I liked the adaptation, the series, the Netflix series, I actually really ended up enjoying. Well, I mean, I was still kind of pissed at the story, but I think they fixed a lot of things in the series. They fleshed out the characters a lot, I could actually tell the characters apart. I actually liked some of the other characters. Uh, and I, I, I just, I feel like fleshing out those stories kind of took it away from a blame area, because now we were seeing other characters and their lives and their feelings and realizing that because that's one of the problems I had with the book too I forgot to mention um it focused a lot on what Hannah was feeling it was like you never know what's going on in someone's life how could you have done this to her but kind of glosses over the fact that the people who did things to her and I'm putting it in quotes because some of the people who did things it was kind of just like eh this not talking about like Bryce Walker or Justin, obviously, but <laughs> some of them, it was just kind of like, that doesn't seem that bad. Like I can see why it was upsetting, but it doesn't seem like it belongs on a list with a rapist. I don't know, but I liked the way you could see those other characters and I liked how it kind of brought you back to the fact that they also are people and have things going on in their own lives as well that may have resulted in this. For example, Courtney. I mean, they changed that story up a little bit, but Alex, Jessica, all of these people, like, I, I don't know, it just... I liked the fact, I felt like it was more humanizing than the books. I feel like in the books it kind of only had Hannah as a human and they were just kind of like, she was a human, how could you do this to her? Let's not even think about the fact that you're a human who has shit going on too. And I think the series, the Netflix series, fixed that up a bit, which I appreciated. Thank you, Netflix. Um, I also liked the change they made to Clay's mom because she actually seemed to give a shit in the, in the series. And, I mean, she was annoying as well, but she was annoying in a parent sort of way. It wasn't like I was annoyed at her because she wasn't doing her job as a mother and was just being like, okay, go ahead and lie to me, it's all great. She was annoying in a parent sort of way, as in, I want to know what the hell is going on. You just tell me shit. Uh, what else in the series did I think they fixed? I also liked that Hannah's parents didn't just disappear in the book. They're just gone. Like, Clay says at one point that after she died, they just- no one's seen them since. And I like in the- in the show that they're actually still there and you get to see what it did to them. Because I think that's important to point out to people who may be considering taking their life. You're leaving people behind. And it's important to, like, realize what that's going to do to them. Uh... So yeah, I think this may be one of the rare occasions where I prefer the film adaptation to the actual first book. It still had issues, um, but I liked it a lot better than the book. They fixed a lot of the issues that I had with the book. One problem I did have with the series too, with the show, I mean like I said they fixed a lot, 
but Tony's relationship with what was his name Brad his his boyfriend I kind of just felt like that was thrown in there for the sake of being like look LGBT characters cool because that whole relationship didn't feel like a relationship to me. I mean, that scene where they're sitting against the car overlooking, like, they're on, like, a little cliff-type thingy, and Brad's like, well, I can't be your boyfriend if you don't start uh, being honest with me. And they're, like, five feet apart. Like, they're not even next to each other. There's never a scene with them holding hands. They kind of just seem like they're kind of, like, sort of friends or something. I just, it felt so weird. There was nothing in there except for Tony being like, oh yeah, that's my boyfriend. To say that they were boyfriends, it kind of just felt like they were thrown in there, but they didn't actually want to show a relationship. And I mean, I'm not asking for a storyline with those two characters because that's not what it's about. I'm not asking to like see their relationship unfold at all, but if they're in a relationship, you can have a scene with them holding hands or one of them with their arm around the other and it's not going to take away from the story it's just going to make it not look like really awkward like two guys who kind of don't even want to be there when they were sitting so far apart from each other over this beautiful scene and their boyfriends i was just like and i know they were having like a little fight type thing but like still i just i would have like thought they'd be like closer like Maybe their shoulders barely touching. Like, I don't know. It just didn't look like a relationship. Or a scene where, like, Brad reaches across the table and, like, takes his hand or something and he's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, just something boyfriendy. It just felt like they threw it in there for the sake of saying that they had LGBT characters so that they wouldn't... They did really well on diversity, don't get me wrong. Like, they had a diverse set of characters. They had like a bunch of different races and body types and it was it was good i mean they did okay they did a really decent job with diversity and then they had the lgbt characters but it just felt weird that one that one relationship and and what's her face courtney's dad's also kind of didn't say i don't know it just felt really strange to me Especially when you look at the fact that the straight characters, the straight couples, I mean, they're holding hands or arms around each other and it's not taking away from the story, so I don't know. It felt weird to me. I don't Let me know down below if you agree. Anyway, those are my thoughts and feelings on the book and the show. Definitely liked the show better. Probably, honestly, and I never do this, but I would probably recommend just watching the show and not reading the book. Uh, never do that. I never, ever, ever say that, but that would probably be my recommendation for this time around. So, yeah, that's all I've got for you today, and I will see you next time. Bye!